It's been a long time since I had the opportunity to bring kids up front, um, and I still can't do that, but I do want to start with a little story that I think the, the kids might appreciate. It's the story of Jeremiah, or one of those stories. Jeremiah is an interesting prophet in the Old Testament, partly to me at least, because he was first called by God when he was a teenager. You know, he might have only been 15, 16 when he starts his calling, if you will. But years later, he is in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is being sieged. That is, Jerusalem is being attacked by the Babylonian army. And Jeremiah um, is in touch, if you will, with God. And God says to Jeremiah, give, give the people this message, surrender. Now, the adults here, you guys would appreciate that that's not likely to make Jeremiah a real popular guy, you know, because, in fact, they complained about him. They said he is, you know, hurting the morale of the army, and he's hurting our morale. He shouldn't be saying this kind of thing. And as a matter of fact, there were other prophets in the, in the city with Jeremiah who were saying exactly the opposite thing. And they were saying, oh, no, 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 Jeremiah's wrong about this. God is powerful. God, God's going to take care of us, just like he's taken care of us before. And, and so we just need to keep believing, and, and, and God will deliver us out of this situation. He will defeat the Babylonian army. So for the kids, the lesson here is simply, Jeremiah did the right thing. He told people what God had told him to say. In other words, he obeyed God. And it did not make him popular in any way, shape, or form. But he was right. The Babylonian army did indeed win. They conquered the city, destroyed the temple, this monstrous event in the life of the country. So for the kids, that's just a good lesson to hold on to. Well, you know, if, if, you, if you know what you're doing, you have a choice, always do what God said. That's what Jeremiah did. It worked out pretty well for him, not so much for those other guys. But for the adults, um, I bring this story up because it, it ties into the first reading that Brandon did for us. The last couple of lines have to do with sort of a general admonition, if you will, to prophets. And in our day and age, we don't really have prophets, but you might think in our day of age, this would apply to people like me, to preachers and people who teach, lay people, as well as clergy. Whether that's in a church or whether that's online, they got their own YouTube channel, whatever it is. Moses, speaking for God here, says to these people, says to me, it is very important. You must only speak what I tell you to speak. Do not say things that I didn't tell you to say. And especially do not speak for other gods. So you need to know up front that the first part of this, I guess, really just applies to me, less to you. But it was great for me this week to reflect on this and to be reminded that that's my duty, if you will. That's my obligation. And, and you should know that I do take this seriously. Um, people often will give me suggestions for, oh, Father, wouldn't it be nice if you talked about thus and such? And, and that's a wonderful suggestion. I don't mind people making it. But that's not how I decide. I don't have a list someplace where it's like, oh, we haven't talked about this for a while, let me, let me talk about this. We simply, each week, just take a look at the readings and try in my best way to pray and reflect on the readings and see what the good Lord's bringing up. Sometimes it's stuff I'd just as soon not talk about. Some of you have been around here for a while, you remember about two years ago, the good Lord started talking about money a lot. And seemed to want me to talk about money a lot. Now, we weren't talking about parish money. We were talking about stewardship and giving, but some people questioned whether that was something I should be doing. And it was like, 
I don't know, I just kind of feel like that's what God wants me to talk about. And so I do take this very seriously. But what about the rest of us? I think it's important for you to understand that you, all of us, myself included, we have an obligation here. Because sadly, you cannot guarantee, you're not guaranteed that in any, that, that I'm going to do this, that I'm going to take this seriously. And indeed, it's entirely possible that in a given week, I'm going to get it wrong. You're certainly not guaranteed about the, the video you watch on the computer. Did that person, are they, have they thought about this, prayed about this, have, have they recorded this because they believe this is what God wants them to say? So let me just give you some examples about this that might help you with this idea of discernment. Because it's our obligation. We have to figure out, is this message I'm hearing, whether in Mass, outside of Mass, whatever it is, is this of the Lord? So the first, a positive example, um, you know, going back to the topic of stewardship, years ago, I mean, I guess now 15, 20 years ago, I remember distinctly hearing a, I guess what you would call now a podcast, um, and the guy spent a lot of time talking about money, possessions, giving, stewardship. I didn't like a word of it. It was not much fun to listen to. But the, the, the discomfort I felt was... It's important to describe it as best I can. It wasn't like I was angry, and it wasn't like I thought the guy was wrong. It was, there was actually a sense of peace about it. In other words, what I realized was happening was that this was God troubling my spirit for a very good reason. And, and, and that's what started me on a very long journey of getting better and better and better with use of money and my stewardship and all that sort of stuff. You can contrast that, though, with a video I watched, I, I think it was in October, it was basically um, a video as a priest and he basically was telling me how to vote. That, that was the point of, of, his, of, of his message. And, and it's important for you to understand that I, I, I agreed with a lot of what he was saying, but I came to the conclusion that it was not of, of God, which will sound odd to you perhaps, but as I was listening to it, I, I'm, I'm realizing that, yeah, you know, there's a part of me that I want to, you know, preach on brother sort of thing, but there was another part of me that was very unsettled. And it wasn't in that sense of, oh, God is challenging me here. God is, God is nudging me in a way. It was an unsettling as in like really a negative sort of thing, a negative spirit. Because it took me a while to do this. I mean, I, I, after I turned it off, I, I spent some time reflecting on it, thinking about it, praying about it. And what I realized is what I caught somehow, what my spirit had caught, was the fact that the way by which he was saying what I agreed with. Because basically, I know a lot about Jesus. I read all these stories about Jesus. I know how Jesus handles conflict. And this guy was not doing what Jesus was doing. He was not in any way, shape, or form loving his enemy. He was not being kind to them in any way, shape, or form. He was treating his enemy, if you will, the way American society, the way American politics teaches you to treat your enemy. And he was very good at it, I might add. And that wasn't right. And I realized that I don't know the guy's heart. I would like to hope his heart was in the right place. But even though I agreed with it, I was convinced that it was not of the Lord that maybe it would have been better if he had not recorded this thing. Those examples, I hope, will illustrate to you that when you're taking this to prayer, you, you hear something and you want to say, well, is, was this message, this thing I read, this thing I saw, is this of the Lord? The one thing you must not do is equate it with what you like. 
Because if I had chosen in those two examples I gave you to talk about, to judge it on what I liked, I'd be a terrible steward right now because I would have dismissed that first guy because like, oh, I don't want to listen to that. And I would have, I would have been, uh, you know, encouraging this other guy on. I would, have, I would have been wrong in both cases. Leave your preferences out of it. Because otherwise, you'll never give the good Lord a chance to trouble you, to, to move you along in your discipleship. Rather, what you want to do, you hear something, and again, whether you agree with it or not, I think it's worth taking the time. And that's the, if there's a trick to it at all, it's a question of taking time. A few minutes maybe is enough. It, maybe it'll take longer, but to take it to prayer and ask the Lord, I heard this. I'm not sure. Was this of you? And as you think about it and pray about it, it I believe it, you will sense the answer. You'll sense the difference between being troubled in a positive way by God. You'll sense love and kindness in it versus the negativity and the demeaning that, for example, that I heard in that other video. But we need to do this. I bring this up with the, the teens a lot, try to make sure that they're aware of all the voices, all the things, the messages that come to them every day. We need to filter through all that and look for Look for God's voice, because that's the authentic voice. That's the voice we want to follow, the, the voice of the shepherd. We want to follow that voice. We don't want to be following all these other voices. They don't go anywhere. Or to use a line that will show up later in the, in the liturgy, there's no life in all that other stuff. But there is life in listening to God. And so let's take the time to discern and listen to God.